Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Alan. God is good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. My Jesus, my boss, he have a coach and a little legal amazon, a little man to go. Izi onda mahaya lohu hari me okumyele shebala o mababo babe mabezi mago mabelonda ye la kande o shi amagamonza mandeli amongare bo sedele de alba I have heard the chorus of a regiment of heaven a regiment of angels saying to the sons of men they said we are for praise and we want you to join us. And whatever it takes for you to praise, we are for it. And so, such a declaration, in case you haven't taken time to think about it, is such that these angels were made to praise. And they are now offering their allegiance to you to say that whatever needs to happen in your life for you to praise Him, they are signing up to help. Angels, according to the word of God, <laughs> praise the Lord, they are ministering spirits to those of us who are heirs of salvation together with Christ Jesus. Let's be seated. God bless you guys. You be seated too, ladies. Thank you. The beauty of the presence of God is that everything that you need is in the water. Everything that you need. Look around you today. Everything that was made came out of the water. The land came out of the water and you came out of the land. The land came out of the water and trees came out of the land. I pray for you today that where I have been, you will be also. And that you will be in the presence of God and be registered to have shown up in the presence of God. You see, the reason why we do things like this, which is to throw ourselves into the atmosphere of his presence is because when we do, he comes to visit us. Let me tell you something. The very first company that I started in America was a company that I started at the time wherein we were broke as chalk. The rational thing for me to do was to be running Elta Skelter, looking for job and looking for money. But the Lord said to me, I need to see you. And I spent weeks day after day, morning, afternoon, and night in the presence of God. Sometimes I will come out when I feel bad that I haven't played with my son all day. Because I know my wife will still see me at night and we will talk, I will share with her the things that the Lord has been revealing to me. But do you know that after a couple of weeks of seeking the Lord in his presence, he visited me at night. He showed up in the dream and he revealed to me the blueprints for a business that I was supposed to start. This was 2013. And let me tell you something, I did not understand a thing that he was showing me. And it was supposed to be in my field of expertise. But the reason why I didn't understand it was because God was showing me the next level. By the time I understood it, weeks afterwards, the Lord said to me, look at what you have written at the bottom of this diagram that I gave you. And I said, it is pave. And the Lord made it clear to me that that intellectual property will pave the way for me. If you're wondering, pave stands for process approach for visual expansion. It is a management system methodology that God gifted to me from the book of Genesis. And do you know that two years after that day that I received that blueprint from the Lord, I received an offer to sell that business. Let me tell you something, everything is in the water. It is not just anointing to speak in tongues and to prophesy. The Bible says it is the Lord your God that gives you the power to get wealth. Curses that have been in generations can be broken because one person shows up in the presence of God. Entire destinies can be turned around because one man shows up in the presence of God. Keep showing up in his presence. When the time comes, it will visit you. And one visitation from God is what you need for your season to change completely and for harvest to come in like it has never been seen. Do not joke with his presence. Seek his presence like your life depends on it. David was the king of Israel, a man of means. He had won pretty much every battle that he fought. 
He had laid up gold so much so they don't know what to do with it. There were generals in the army of David that were losing their mind because the wealth was too much and the conquest had become like water. Every time they go to war, they win. And you know what he said? He said, one thing have I desired and that will I seek after that I may do well in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty. Let me tell you something. If the Lord lets you behold the beauty of his presence, whatever you take out from God's presence will change the world and people will pay you for it. I want to encourage you. There was a time, even after I sold my business, the guys who bought it, they required of me to help them run their business until they can use the intellectual property that they bought from me. And I said, okay, it's no biggie. They ended up paying me again almost twice what they bought it for while I was helping them transition. But the beauty of it was this. You see, life will always come with its challenges. So some people challenged me on the job and they said, well, you cast the vision. And we have all bought into the vision. But now we can't even figure out a way of implementation. And the natural me would want to go to the library, go online, talk to other consultants, do research and what not, which I did. But what I was finding was what everybody else knew. And so one day I went to the basement and I abandoned myself before the Lord 18 hours. If I came upstairs, I came to drink water. At the end of the day, by the time I was done, I came out with a piece of paper. And what I wrote on it initially looked like gibberish to me. And the Lord said to me, this is what you have come for. Here it is. Do you know that a couple of weeks later, I got a call asking that a lawyer wanted to speak with me. I said, what is the problem? The owner of the company saw what I wrote without telling me. He sent it to his intellectual property lawyers and they said that they had researched and found nothing like what I had written and two patents were in that solution. Two patents. Two potential patents were in the solution. And I tell you what, they said to me, the intellectual property that we bought from you originally, we can't figure it out. We want to sign it off to you. Just give us this new solution. Let it be in our name. And I said to them, by all means, because there is more where that came from. Let me tell you something. The presence of God, everything that you need is in the water. What is the water? The water is the basis for the presence of God. The Bible says in the beginning that there was what? The spirit of the Lord was hovering over the face of the deep. The presence of God contains the fish, the trees, the land, the mountains, the rivers. Everything was already in the water. So when you come into the presence of God, there is deliverance. When you come into the presence of God, there is the anointing to dream dreams. When you come into the presence of God, there is the grace to speak with an unknown tongue. When you come into the presence of God, there is insight, there is revelation. There is everything that you need that you do not even know that you need in the presence of God. So I want to encourage you, do not be an alien to the presence of God. Do all of what it takes for you to get acknowledged in the presence of God. You see me when I come in here? I love the presence of God. I love it. And that is the reason why I have cultivated the habit over the years to recognize the rudiments of the presence of God. Let me tell you something. There was nothing made that was made without the word. All of what you need to think, all of what you need to imagine, all of what you need to mouth, all of how you need to compose yourself in the presence of God is already written in the word of God. And so when you take the word of God into you, when you need to behave like a heavenly being, you will suddenly know how because the word of God is heavenly literacy. Many of us are literate in our careers. Many of us have the understanding of the businesses of men, but we have yet to become educated in the things of God. And that is the reason why when God is offering for you to come into his presence, it's like finding somebody at the train station who is not literate in the transportation systems of men. I remember the first time my mom went to Wales. She had to stop in London to connect and get another uh, flight going to uh, Bristol. I believe it was. But for her to be able to cross from one train station to the other, she had no clue what to do. She saw people go through the barriers without doing anything. It would just open up to them. And she was beginning to wonder, does this barrier recognize that I've just come here? No, 
After a while, somebody came to her and said, are you okay? You've just been standing here. She was like, how do I cross the barrier? And she was holding the ticket in her hand. And the lady said, just put the ticket in the thing. She said, but others are not. The woman says they are, but they're doing it so quickly, you don't know what's going on. This is what happens when you do not have spiritual literacy. You notice that the angels are rising and descending, ascending and descending, and you're just there wondering what is going on. Something within you is telling you that the presence of God is being accessed from where you're at, but you don't know how. Let me tell you something. Heaven is so fast. Heaven is so quick. If you don't know what is going on, it is just like me. Sometimes when I speak, I speak so quickly that if you do not understand English language properly, you would think I'm speaking in tongues. And that is how it is sometimes in the realm of the spirit. Things happen so quickly that if you are not careful, it will pass you by. Look at Jacob. While he was still taking his spiritual life very lightly, the presence of God came to him. And it wasn't until he woke up that he was like, oh my God. He says, the Lord was here and I knew it not. So he started to teach his children that whenever the presence of the Lord appeared, that they needed to lay hold of it. Do you know that Solomon, when Solomon had the conversation with God, where God asked him what he wanted, and he said he wanted the spirit of wisdom. Do you know that happened in his sleep? When the Lord showed up in his sleep, he was already awake, waiting because he knew that it was his time of visitation. I want to encourage you, get into the word of God, understand the rudiments. Elijah said, if you saw me or if you would see me when I am going up, you will receive a double portion of the anointing. But you need to know how to see, to lay hold of what God has for you. I am so excited today. I'm fired up, very delighted because of the fact that while we were there, I was caught in the train of his robe and I knew what it was. Do you know that if I hadn't studied the word of God to recognize that the train, that the robe of God is like a train, I would have thought somebody was passing in front of me. I used to do that when I was younger and I didn't know better. I would get distracted easily in the presence of God, thinking the things that I'm experiencing in the spirit are things happening around me, wondering who just passed. Did anybody touch me? Did you touch me? Did you, did you cross by here? But immediately I knew that it wasn't anybody else but the train of his robe. As soon as I saw that, I opened my mouth and the oil was being poured. And that was when my wife says, let it overflow. And I was like, Father, I thank you. Because that is a confirmation to let me know that I was being anointed. And you see, when God anoints you, it, is not, it doesn't have to show immediately. Look at David. When David was anointed, he went back into the wilderness. He went back to look after sheep, even though he had been anointed. Even though he had been anointed, a man wanted to kill him. He had to run for his dear life. Even though he had been anointed, the lion still tried to chase him around while he was watching his father's sheep. Don't worry about the anointing. It will show up when it is needed, but you need to receive it when it is given. Praise the Lord. Come on, that is the spirit, Michelle. That is the spirit. Let me tell you something. God has a scripture for you. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 15. You see, I like it when somebody receives by faith. The Bible says, just like I told you, you don't worry about the anointing. It will deliver when it is needed, but you have to receive it while it has been given. Isaiah chapter 7. I want to share with you a mystery. In fact, I want to give it to you as a key to unlock the supernatural in your life. Isaiah chapter seven, verse 15. The Bible says curds and honey shall he eat. Speaking about the Lord Jesus when he comes, that curds and honey shall he eat. You know, ever wonder the reason why God took his children from the land of Egypt where they were eating garlic and onions? Because he was preparing for Jesus to come and Jesus was not meant to eat garlic and, and honey, I mean, and onions. Jesus was destined by God to feed on honey and curds. Curds is when you process, when you churn milk. It's almost like making cheese, but not quite all the way, right? And so that was what God was preparing for him to eat. And that was why they had to leave Egypt to go into the promised land because the promised land was flowing with what? With milk and honey, God already prepared everything that you will ever need.
You think he was kidding? When he said, I am taking you to a land. He told Abraham, I am taking you to a land that is flowing with milk and honey. Because without the milk and honey, how will the Messiah come? Because the milk and the honey was a requirement for the Messiah to be able to discern as Adam did even better. What did Adam lose? Adam lost his discernment. And that was the beginning of all the trouble. So when the Messiah came as the second Adam, he had to be discerning. So this is the secret to the sermon and the Lord is giving it to you because your faith was on fire. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says curds and honey shall he eat. Curds and honey he shall eat that he may know to refuse evil and choose that which is good. Let me tell you something. And I'm telling you this prophetically. It is not, you don't even have to do anything but what you have already done which is to receive it. You see, the Lord as a mother is gifting you the curds and the honey to feed the, your children so that they know how to refuse evil. Let me tell you something, Michelle, every pattern of mistakes, of missteps, of miscalculations, of misjudgments is broken over your family line from today in the mighty name of Jesus because your children will shun evil and embrace that which is good. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now I tell you what, you have to see me because I am getting ready to go. But the Lord has for you a double portion of the anointing. So from this moment on, what sharp on your discernment, open your eyes so that you do not miss the mantle as it drops. Igabas, Eruk, Ayemanda. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Keep drinking from that well. Father, we thank you. Oh, Father, we have confidence by the blood. Father, we have confidence by the blood of Jesus to come into the place where you are. To come into the place where you are. See, the reason why many of you are not pressing into the presence of God is just being told to me that you think you needed things, that you need certain requirements to be fulfilled to come into his presence. Whereas everything you need is in that presence. All you need to come into that presence is to recognize that you need to be in that presence. The only requirement is boldness. The Bible says come boldly before the throne of grace where you will obtain mercy and grace to help in time of need. If I were you, I would just come anyway. When Isaiah showed up before the presence of God, he did not first of all sanctify himself before going into the presence of God. He, showed, he found himself in the presence of God and was like, well, by the way, I need help. I'm not sanctified. He, says, my, my, he said, I'm a man of unclean lips. And immediately one of the seraphim took the coal, took a coal from the altar and cleansed his lips. Everything that you need is in the water. Imagine if the Lord is inviting you to come and swim in the ocean. And you're like, oh God, I want to take a shower first. No, God's water is not a swimming pool in your subdivision. You know them little pools that tell you to shower first? No, God is saying, I want you to jump in. When Peter was like, uh, is that you? He said, if it is you, bid me to come. The Lord says, come. The Lord is saying, come as you are. There is nothing you can make of yourself other than what God makes of you. So do you want to make yourself righteous before coming to the presence of God? The righteousness is in his presence. There is no need to prepare yourself in some way, just come into his presence. Come on, go for it. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. It is broken. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. It is. It is. Why don't we give him praise? Hallelujah. Father, we worship your holy name. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. You see, the Lord is good. I cry because of the love of God. I saw you before you came. And my heart was moved with compassion. I didn't even see you when you physically came. But I saw you when you were on your way. And I just want to say to you women, be it unto you according to your faith. Go and your faith makes you whole. Let me tell you something. That which is yours, no one can take because you are in God. Holy Ghost. And the Lord says it is well with that child from this hour. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things that I have always said, it, it is amazing to seek the Lord, but there is nothing that compares to when the Lord visits you. What you need to long for is a visitation and you demonstrate your hunger and thirst for that visitation by making sure that you are pressing into his presence every chance that you get. We have come to a season, a glorious season. While the worship was on, I saw the Lord in his field and he was admiring the harvest and he was running his hands through the sheaves and he said to me, he said, do you think I would let the devourer take my harvest? I said, no Lord, I said, because you are the rebuker of the devourer. Trust him, he will not let any evil come nigh you. You are his harvest. You are his portion. And he is your portion. Be more confident in God than you can ever be in your own ability to please him. He is God, you are not. And he says, I will perform that which I have said. You just need to believe in him. The Bible says believe in the Lord. The world tells you believe in yourself. Where has that gotten you? Oh, you have to believe in yourself. <laughs> when the Bible says that the arm of flesh shall fail. If there is any belief in me, I want to believe in the Lord. I do not want to believe in my own ability to say no to sin, but I want to believe in God's ability by his spirit that is on the inside of me which is an extension of the Messiah to shun evil and embrace that which is good. A good tree bears only good fruits and your heavenly father is a pretty good tree. The only good tree there is and you are his offspring. So it is time for you also to bear good fruits because you are a good fruit. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. You have been qualified by grace through faith. Do not shortchange yourself by expecting that you have to go to Bible school for seven years before you can lay your hands on the sick for them to recover. Do not shortchange yourself. Let me tell you something. We're in such a glorious season. If you would dare to press into the presence of God, <laughs> the angels are waiting to receive you. I was telling the men at the men's breakfast this morning, I said there's been a shift in the spiritual atmosphere of communion house from that, what was, what was it, like three weeks ago when the Lord says, will you watch with me an hour? And we have been praying an hour. These days, you just have to show up. How many people have been experiencing just speaking in tongues for five minutes and it's almost as if you are no longer alone in the room? I had an experience yesterday. <laughs> no, it was the early hours of this morning. I nearly ran out of the room. I started to hear singing. It was like, I, I heard voices. At first I was like, oh my God, what have I done? But it's a good thing. It's a good thing for you to be able to experience the reality of the scene as you experience the scene. Do you know that the things that we see are not as tangible as the things that we do not see? The way Tyler is sitting next to you is not as real as the way Jesus is sitting next to you. The angels that are here are more present than the people that are here. 
Some of us are here, but you're already thinking about a million and one things. But the angels who are here on assignment, they have a laser focus. The question is, will you shift gear into the dimension of your miracle? Or will you stand in the flesh and in the natural and be waiting for a magic to happen? Press in. Lay hold of the hem of his garment. I'm not going to labor us too much tonight. But I'm going to cut us loose in righteousness for us to take the fire of his presence that is here today and go home and say, Lord, I want to see you. Amen. Say, Lord, I want your presence in my abode. This house is your house. Lord, I want you to be free to move in every area of this house. You begin to declare the praises of him who has called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. God inhabits the praises of his people. When you begin to create praise in your home, you create the presence of God. You have that much power to create that atmosphere of his presence. And when he comes, real power comes. Yeshua Hamashiach Lion of Judah Aguine Chamber Yeshua Hamashiach Lion of Judah Aguine Chamber Yeshua Hamashiach, Lion of Judah, Aguine Chamber. Father, we thank you because when we call upon you, you answer. And we thank you because your presence is here, mighty and strong. Now let each and every one of us present here today receive the wisdom with which to create the atmosphere of your presence by praise everywhere that we go in all the things that we do holy ghost manda 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 ram manda matthew chapter 7 verse 19 the lord is doing a work upon the earth the Lord would have me say to you that the reason why we need to know that every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire is simple. You know why God wants us to know that now? You know we started from Matthew 7, 18 a couple of weeks ago, 7, 17, then we went to 7, 18 on Tuesday and now we're at 7, what? 19. And the Lord says, I want you to know that we have come to a time of burning the tears in the fire. So God is saying, if I, the Lord, will burn the tears in the fire, then will I not also gather the wheat into my barn? <laughs> you see, let me tell you the principle. Let me remind you of the principle because you must not miss your season. The Bible says God would cover his presence in dark clouds so that you may see the light. He would allow darkness to come upon the face of the earth first. The Bible says in the last days, darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness to people. Why? So that no one will mistake your light for a speck. Because he said, arise and shine. Arise, shine. For your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He says, those people who are in darkness, they will now come to you. So what is the order of things? Darkness must precede the light. And so the wheat will not be harvested until the tears have been burned. So a lot of what we're seeing in the world today is the pulling out and the uprooting of the tears. An ungodly world system or the ungodly world system of mammon 
is being uprooted. The people that have corrupted the governance of our nations are being uprooted. While worship was on, do you remember as we were praying? After the worship, my wife said that you can see that the systems are failing. I was excited because what I saw while worship was on was I saw the hammer of God and it was smashing a castle. Initially, I saw the castle. The castle looked so big and it was built out of stones. But by the time the Lord showed up, the castle looked like a little Lego. Let me say that again. Maybe you didn't hear me. The Lord showed me the castle first. I was like, oh my God, this thing is huge. He was a humongous castle and it was made not of blocks or bricks, but it was made of stones. It was monstrous. But by the time the Lord showed up, if not that I had taken a good look at it, I would have thought it was a different vision. But it was the same castle, but it was about the size of a Lego. And the Lord had his hammer with which to smash it. And he did. So get ready, folks. The Lord says... God made us a promise. He said, only with your eyes shall you behold the reward of the wicked. Do you know that on Tuesday, I shared with you, was it Tuesday or Saturday last week that I shared with you that in the vision the Lord showed to me, it was on Tuesday. And because we have already prayed, I will share it again. When the Lord showed to me that food was being rationed. Oh yeah, it's already beginning to happen. And brother Greg was not here, but he sent me a text message. I don't even know. How did you hear what I said? Because you were not here. Were people snitching on the sermon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because when he, I was, as soon as I got home, he sent me a screenshot. He says, this screenshot is from the 28th of April. Thereabouts. When the Lord had revealed to him in three separate visions that there will be rationing of food. So this morning at the men's breakfast, the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, give them an update. Give them an update. And the update that the Holy Spirit had for me, which I shared with them, which I will share with you also, is that we will not be a part of that rationing. Only with our eyes shall we behold. Now, what I cannot tell you is whether we're going to be looking from up or we're going to be looking from here. But we don't have to worry about it because David said, I was young, but now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. No, his children begging for bread. Oh yes, the young lions do lack. The Bible says the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But those who put their trust in the Lord will not lack anything good. Your focus right now is not on what's going on out there. It's on the presence of God. Draw close to Him. And so that is it for now and for tonight. But I want to encourage you, rejoice in the Lord and in the power of His might. The Lord has come today through the ministry of my obedience to serve you an invitation to say come into my presence because the door of the ark is about to be shot. The Lord is inviting you to come into his presence because everything that you need is in his presence. The miracle that will feed you, the providence that will sustain you is in his presence because you will behold with your eyes and the Holy Spirit says you do know where you're going to be watching from because I was like are we going to be watching from up or are we going to be watching from down? He said to me just now, he said I told you that many will fall on your left and many more on your right but only with your eyes so while we're still here they will begin to drop as flies they will begin to ration to sustain the few but you will not be a part of that by experience only by observation because the Lord is allowing the bubble of his presence to go with you wherever you go isn't God good God is good praise the Lord he has you under the shadow of his wings you just need to go and take your own scoop of the presence of God and let it go with you. Do you remember the prophet, the vision of Ezekiel when Ezekiel saw the throne of God? The throne of God moved and the presence of God from heaven moved with it. The presence of God is mobile. But you have to engage it from the source. They're not going to bring it to you. So be encouraged. Press in. Press into the presence of God. I'm going to, I'm going to, I really want to give you one more thing, if the Lord would let me. Come with me to Revelation chapter 14. That you may fully press in. I did what I did on Tuesday. It's actually Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14, verse 7. The Bible says, for none of us 
lives to himself and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, we live or we die. We are the Lord's. Why am I giving you this scripture? As I was speaking, speaking earlier on, I saw a hand raised and it was with a question. And the question is, how will these things be? And the Lord says, the root of that question is not as much a quest for knowledge as it is out of fear. The Lord does not want you to be afraid. What are most people afraid of? Most people are afraid for their lives. But the Lord is saying, you did not make yourself. You did not send yourself here. Thank you, Cody. You did not bring yourself here. If you live, you live unto the Lord. If you die, you die unto the Lord. Even though the Lord has given you a life that is more than the abundant life, he wants you to access that life by first of all losing the fear of death. The devil is good at making people afraid for their lives so that they stretch out their hands to do something when they were supposed to wait and be still and let the Lord stretch his hand. The Bible says that God is not like the idols of wood who has no hands. Remember Uzzah. Uzzah wanted to help the presence, the ark of the covenant from falling. He died. Why? Because his actions were a blasphemy to the Holy Spirit. By trying to help the Ark of the Covenant, what he was saying in essence is that they were no different from the other nations whose gods were idols that cannot pick themselves up. And God needed to let it be known that he is not one of those gods that you need to fight for. He is the God that fights for you. So is the enemy telling you that you're broke and that you won't be able to make it? And that you should do something to help God? God is saying, I don't need your help. I am your help. And so in order for you to enjoy the providence that God has for you, while food is being rationed out there, you need to be in absolute dependence on God. Whether you live or you die, you live or you die unto the Lord. The Lord is saying, I want you to forget about losing anything because in Christ you have already gained it all. Amen. The devil is coming around again like he did in 2020 to scare people to do all kinds of things. I want to tell you in the mighty name of Jesus, fear will not have any hold on you. I declare over you in the mighty name of Jesus that you will be reminded constantly by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that you have not received the spirit of fear but the spirit of love because God loves you and the spirit of power because you have the Holy Spirit and the spirit of a sound mind because you have the mind of Christ. Defy the fear of death and live. Defy fear of death and live. Defy lack and enjoy plenty. Your heart needs to trust absolutely in God. It's not going to happen magically. It will only happen by the process of heaven. And the divine process of God for sustenance in the season that we're in is undiluted trust. Let me tell you something that makes people afraid. If you notice that the young lion is hungry, there's a big problem. Because every other animal in the jungle would have died before the young lion becomes hungry. Because the big lion always feeds his own. And so the only time a young lion is hungry is when there are no animals to eat. And so people become genuinely afraid. But David said, even when that happens, that the lion himself has no more praise to devour. He says, you don't have to worry. If you trust absolutely in God, you're fine. Do you know the principle behind what David said? Because those animals depend on the jungle. 
but your providence is coming from above. So why do you have to worry what's going on around you? The Bible says, and my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Because it is by Christ Jesus, I don't have to worry because everything that is in Christ Jesus is accessible by faith. The Bible says, by grace, have we been saved through faith, not of ourselves, because all you have to do is just to believe in him. Because the Bible lets us know for as many as have received him, even to them who believe on his name, have we given the power to become the sons of God. So fear not, do not be afraid. Tia, what did I say? Do not be afraid of anything. Because whatever happens, whether you go out or you come in, you do it unto the Lord. Whether we live or we die, we do it unto the Lord. So when you're going out and you're coming in, you're confident. Things may rise and fall in the markets, but you will never fall. Praise the Lord. So we're going to break bread this very minute. We're breaking bread. Go to Galatians chapter 2 verse 3. And this one is to take you by the grace of God over the top. As we break bread, this is our scripture for breaking bread. Galatians chapter 3 verse 2. What does it say? It says, this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? He said, I just want to know. This was when he came out with a whip of rebuke to the Galatians. Apostle Paul, he says, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Having been saved by grace, will you now be made perfect by your works? So I want to announce to you today, it doesn't matter all of the things that the world system is telling you to do to survive what is coming. That was not how you got saved. You got saved only by, oh, you didn't hear what I said. What I said, which is the prophecy for the season or part of the seven most crucial prophecies of the season is that we're stepping into that which is the reality of what COVID shutdown was rehearsal for. The COVID shutdown was a drill. Did the Lord tell us that? On the 9th or the 10th of March, he told us right in the basement where we were in that a drill was beginning. Two or three days later, God told us on Tuesday, on Friday, the EMP was released, the emergency medical procedure that shut everything down. And the Lord says, whatever happens now, in this season, it's a drill. The children of this world are using it to prepare. You also prepare. So what I am telling you is that we have come to the season of the real deal. In COVID, there were recommendations. But now, what is about to come out of the mouth of the beast are no longer recommendations, but law. They will tell you that it is the law to do this and to do that. Fear not, even though it's a few months away, but I say over you by the Holy Spirit, do not be afraid because the Bible says you do not live by the word of the law, but you live by faith. No matter what the law says to do or not to do, let your confidence remain in God because you will go out and you will come in and nobody will stop you. You will eat and you will be fed and no one will stop you. You will sleep and you will wake and no one will stop you because you are not under their law, but you are under under grace fear not ladies and gentlemen I have seen the beast from the abyss and he isn't pretty all, all of that ugliness is to scare you but you have seen the Lord Jesus and you know that greater is he that is in you oh yeah you were a little bit afraid I saw that than he that is in the world fear are not Hallelujah. So let's read that again. In fact, let me just let me read it over you again. What I want to learn from you, folks, in the next couple of weeks, what I want to learn from you is that you are no longer walking by sight, but you're walking by faith. What I want to learn is that, look, you recognize that you have been saved by grace through faith, not of works, not even the works of the law. It doesn't matter where that law comes from or who makes that law. 
you trust only in God. Father, we thank you because these things have been revealed to us and to our children because these are the mysteries of the kingdom. You know, on Tuesday, I told you that the angel of the Lord, the first angel that appeared to me to reveal to me that they are concealing, when I say they, I'm talking about the Luciferians, the children of this world, that they are concealing the true signs of the times that we're in by hiding the stars of the heavens that are already beginning to fall to the earth. I told you that at first I had to be very sure that I was an angel of God because it didn't look like an angel of God. And then later on they told me, they said, this thing is top secret. It's a mystery. It's a secret. But they know me once you show me most times. I need to tell my brothers and sisters. So the only caveat that I was given was that do not tell it until you tell them to pray. And that was the reason why we prayed on Tuesday. You understand what I mean? Because with much privilege comes what? Much responsibility. God is looking for sons, not babes. He's not looking for babies. If you're going to be a child of God, a son, a mature believer, you need to be ready to take responsibility for the privileges that you enjoy. So all of these things is not just for you to make, to make you feel good and go tell your friends, what do y'all know? I go to communion house, we get spiritual updates. No, 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 no. You may say that, but pray first. You understand what I mean? Because if I was a member of communion house sitting there hearing these teachings and these prophecies, oh, you better be sure that I'll be calling my friends and saying to them, what is your pastor currently saying? Does he even know that the drill is over and that the drill is about to begin? Oh, y'all don't know nothing. It is not about that. It's a privilege for us to know the things that God is revealing to us. But there is a responsibility that comes with that privilege. And that responsibility is for you to watch and pray. Why? So that Satan does not take advantage of you. So if you haven't started praying a lot, what are you waiting for? The heavens are open. The Holy Spirit told me that. I nearly forgot. But he reminded me just now. While the worship was on and I was standing there, he said to me, he said, your brothers and sisters need to take advantage of the open heavens above them and pray. It's easy to pray these days. I am telling you. Easy. I, I mean, I kid you not. This season that we're in is the season that I've experienced that I would just find myself praying. I was doing some work on the computer and the next thing, I just found myself praying. And I'm like, Ooh, okay. I guess the work on the computer has got away. But apparently it was done. Between the time that it was done and the time that I started praying, there was almost no delineation. It was almost like I am in the spirit. I came to take a break in the natural to do computer work and I was back in the spirit. So I want to encourage you, take advantage of the times. Why am I telling you these things? Because there is a reason why God ordained the ministry of the prophet to give you a heads up. If I'm experiencing it already and others are experiencing it, press in before it becomes common knowledge, before the pool is full. Because the, the, the real miracle is for the first people to dive in the water. Everything is in the water. I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord will reveal to you. In fact, let me tell you things about the water. <laughs> you have to go to the water. You don't want the water to come to you. By the time the water comes to you, it's usually judgment. You understand what I mean? So you want to be the first of all, you want to be the first person to go to the water. And then you can take some of the water home with you and around with you. And what am I saying? You see this measure of the presence of God and this open heaven. It's open for you to go up. Don't wait until what is there comes down. The last time the heavens opened and the waters came down, it flooded the earth. Even though the Lord is not flooding the earth by water anymore, but there is still a judgment coming. That is the reason why you need to go to the water. You need to go to his presence. So let us rise up and break bread. Okay, I already told you that I would tell you four things. So I'm gonna skip number two and I just tell you number three thing about the water. There are seasons appointed by heaven for the water. Now the water that I'm talking about in this particular case is a, sim a symbol of the presence of God that has everything that you need, the healing that you need. 
but you see that water has seasons wherein the Lord himself is in the water so once you understand that then you must ask yourself is this then the season can I answer that question for you yes it is the season so what do you do when you know that it is the season do not wait to be cleansed outside the water I said this before just jump into the water roll into it if you need to what did that man say to Jesus the man said oh I do not have a man to put me in the water and Jesus says okay forget about not having a man do you want to be made whole so I am telling you today do you want to be made whole because the Lord is offering you it's a blank check engage the presence of God like never before I pray for you also that in the mighty name of Jesus that the Lord will open your eyes to see the ones that depend on your obedience many of us will wake up the moment we see the ones who depend on our obedience the ones whose eyes will not be open until you have spoken you see some people's eyes will not be open until your mouth is open some people's legs will remain lame until you get up when you get up and go they will get up and walk I pray that the Lord will open your eyes that you might see not the sins of Nineveh but that you might see the mercy of God upon Nineveh so you stop running away from the presence of God where you need to be equipped fortified and sent to go and make a difference in the world let's pray in the spirit call upon the name of God Hey, call upon the name of God. Call upon the name of God. Call his name. Hallelujah. The glory and the lifter of my head. The God of the heavens, the creator of the heavens and the earth. The one whose name is the almighty. The one who is the I am that I am. The father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who loves our soul and gave his only begotten son so that we will not be lost forever. Call his name. He wants to hear from you. Praise the Lord. I want you at this particular point in time, every, everybody, I want to encourage you. There is nothing in this world that can disqualify you from taking the Lord's body and drinking his blood. Because that is the only requirement for you to be in him. So how can you qualify for what itself is the qualification? Jesus says, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have a part in him. But the reason why many people are afraid to break bread is because the Bible says some have taken of the Lord's body unworthily and it has become a sickness in their bodies, even unto death in some cases. And we're like, oh, I have to be worthy before I take the blood. No, the reason why it was said that they took it unworthily was because they turned the communion into a feast and they would drink wine to the point where they would become sick. That was what they were doing. They will over consume the bread because it is unleavened bread. There's only so much of it that you should eat. They eat unleavened bread, it gets in their stomach, absorbs all the fluid that is in them and they drop, they, they drop dead. That, those were the people that Paul was talking about. So don't say because oh my, my thoughts have been evil all day. I woke up and I was thinking about dirty stuff. God said, I am no longer struggling with you. He says, my spirit will not forever struggle with man because he is in deep flesh and the thoughts of his heart are evil continually. And he said, I love you. Even though he knows that your thoughts are evil. He has come to accept you the way you are because he sees you the way you will be. God does not fail. So when he made you and he made you in his image and in his likeness to have dominion over the face of the earth and then you stumble along the way to God, that is only a bump in the road because he sees the end and he knows in the end you will be glorified for whom he did for no, he called and whom he called, he justified and the ones that he justified, he glorified as far as he's concerned, you are already in the image and in the likeness of Christ. So why are you letting the devil set you back and deprive you of the confidence with which to eat the body of Jesus and drink his blood? Because until you do, you do not have a part in him. 
As I want to encourage you today, as many people as are here, and if you happen to watch this later on online, on Facebook, YouTube, or on the website, or wherever you find this, I want to encourage you, pause the video. Grab yourself a bread, a piece of bread, or cookies. Grab yourself something, and grab yourself some wine or juice, and come back and play this video so that even you will have your eyes open that you may see the Son of Man in his glory. Father, we thank you for Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for your obedience that allowed for you to surrender your body to be bruised and cut open so that room can be made for me in the Godhead. Thank you for the blood that you shed, which was your life that you bled out so that I can live the glorified life that has come to me through the ministry of the second Adam, the Lord Jesus. You may eat of the Lord's body and drink of his blood in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray for you from Matthew 7 and Alan, if you, if you are able or up for it. Actually, you can do your thing. Matt, John can come and receive the offerings and bless the offerings. Um, hallelujah. And um, so myself and John were talking earlier on today. And John was like, uh, for the Christmas party, right? If you and your family um, have already um, proposed in your heart that you're just going to bring one present, don't feel under any obligation to bring for each one of you, Okay. There will be presents made available here by the grace of God. So he just, uh, we were just talking about that and it was like, I want us to make sure that people understand that this is not a matter of necessity. We're just giving you guidelines as to how we can be a blessing to one another, okay? But do your best possible because the Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive. To also be generous. If you are generous in your heart and you want to do something, the Lord will provide. Because the Bible says that the Lord will provide himself a sacrifice. Do you believe enough to want to say that I will come on Tuesday the 20th to be a blessing and the Lord will make it happen in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm going to declare over you from Matthew chapter 7 very quickly. I'm going to declare over you from Matthew chapter 7. Kuba, 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 ka, kuba, 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 ka, kuba, 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 ka. Marabadus kitela dadi bosta. I want to declare over you that you will be a fruit bearing believer. That heaven will recognize your fruits. That men will see your good works, a.k.a. fruits, and give glory to your Father in heaven. I pray that your testimony will not be a testimony of the efforts that you have made, but it will be a testimony of the fruits that you have borne by the Holy Spirit. I also pray for you that in the areas wherein you have struggled to bear fruits, that faith will be reactivated in your life so that you can experience the grace of God in those areas to bear fruits. I pray for you also that in the mighty name of Jesus, you will not be confident in your own ability to bear fruit, neither would you become proud and pompous in the fruits that you have borne, but you will come to recognize that you are only bearing fruits because you yourself you are a fruit from a good tree which is your heavenly father and lastly in the name of Jesus as the Lord Jesus himself is walking through the field and guaranteeing that he will rebuke the devourer I want you to be confident in God that your fruits will not be devoured that your works will not be tarnished that when the Lord Jesus comes you will have your works ready to present to him the one who says I will come and I will reward every man according to his works let your spirit believe and recognize these truths that you may stay confident in God even in these last days. God bless you in Jesus name. Brother John. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. James 1 27 says true religion. I like one verse. One uh I like the Bible app because it has all the different, you know, the message and the ESV and New King James has all the different translations. But one, one of them says, true Christianity is helping the widows and orphans and everyone in need. There is nothing else. And that always hits me. I always remember that. I'm like, there is nothing else. And I'm like, man, I'm like, how am I helping the widows and orphans and everyone in need? My wife and I were talking about that in the car, in the, in the car on the way here. We were like, so we were talking about a different topic and I was like, well, James 127 says there's nothing else. And I'm like, so how are we helping the widows and orphans and everyone in need? You know, um, 
what we were talking at the men's breakfast, I remember we were having some side conversations and one of the brothers we were talking about, we said, you know, it's a, it's a biblical principle. When you give, you know, what you sow, you reap. You know, and, you know, which one are you? Are you a, a sower or a keeper? Ask yourself that. It's kind of like, are you a spender or a saver? Kind of the same kind of thing. But it's, it's a biblical principle. Which one are you? You know, and uh, God's convicted me on this many times, you know, especially in my time. It's like, what am I giving my time to? Do I give my time to Netflix? Do I give my time to, like, what do you give your time to? Because if you give $5 to Starbucks, but you don't give $5 to somebody in need, come on. And it really hits me. I've been reading through a lot of Revelation recently, and I've been thinking about it. I'm like, I would really hate to get to heaven, and God's like, why didn't you do more? What did you give your time to? What did you give your money to? Because what you give your money to shows what you care about. It's true. You know, and that, that really hits me as I'm like, what do we give our time? What do we give our money to? You know, here at Communion House, we're not after your money. Uh, we're pretty transparent, you know, what, what we do. We help a lot of people in need. Somebody gave a car one time, they gave the car back to somebody else. You know, we're always, we're always giving to people and, uh, we're in a building now and you know there's some costs and stuff and, and uh, they don't, they're not keeping you money or anything so I can promise you that um, we have many ways that you can give they have you know cash app and uh, they've got the website we have text to give um, numerous ways you can give here in 2022 it makes it easy uh, and they'll send you a little receipt back so uh, communion house is doing some amazing things I can tell you I've been here almost four years and just some testimonies testimony after testimony after testimony of you know just little things like uh i gave a brother i gave somebody twenty dollars the other day i was like god told me to give you this and then uh somebody gave me a hundred dollars later it's like god told me to give you this and i'm like <laughs> like that was quick uh <laughs> so i was like so i got five times back the amount i was kind of doing i'm like man imagine if i would have given like a thousand dollars to somebody <laughs> Uh, so that kind of hit me. This has happened a few times. I was in a church service here and Pastor Moses said, this is when we were in Christ Culture Center. And see, Pastor Moses said, I'm, I'm going to pray everybody get 10 times back the amount. And I literally only had $10 in my pocket and I gave $10. And then older guy was sitting in the back and he's like, God told me to give you a hundred bucks. And I was like, what the heck? Like literally I'm talking like 20 minutes uh, after. So I was like, it's a biblical principle. And sometimes it don't happen that fast, but you can see the righteous never go hungry. They're, you know, God's always got you. If he cares about the bird that falls from the sky, don't you think he cares about you and your power bill or your electricity, whatever? He, he, he cares about you. So when you, when you cry out to him and you ask that, you know, the righteous never go hungry. I don't think sometimes we realize that we're like, God, I got this credit card bill. God, I got this. And God's like, man, I died for your sins. I see the past, present, and future. You're, you don't got to worry. So here at Communion House, there are many ways you can give. Uh, I encourage you, get involved, you know, serve, you know, tithe, offering. There, there are many ways to give on the screen here. And if you would close your eyes, we are going to pray over the tithes and offerings. Dear Lord, we just thank you for today. Thank you for the message, Lord. Thank you for the worship, Lord. Thank you for the fellowship just gathering here today at Communion House, Lord. Thank you for each and every gift, Lord Jesus. Thank you for multiplying it, multiplying it, multiplying it, Lord. You see everyone's heart. You see their needs, Lord. You see what they're going through right now, Lord. Nothing is too big for you, Lord. Nothing. The blind can see, the mute can speak, the deaf can hear, Lord. Lord, you've raised people from the dead, Lord. You've healed their, healed their cancer, Lord diseases, Lord. You provided for needs, Lord. Nothing is too big for you. So the people that sowed today, Lord, and everyone's heart in here, Lord, we ask you to look upon it, Lord. We ask you to look upon it. We ask you, Lord, to meet every need that's in here. If it's a relationship issue, if it's a child issue, if it's a money issue, whatever it may be, if it's a spiritual issue, whatever it may be, Lord, we ask for your supernatural blessings over them right now, Lord your supernatural blessings. Multiply the finances in this place, Lord. Multiply communion house. We give all these things to you now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, with that, I was going to bring Brother Allen up here, but I didn't see him. 
Okay, we're going to close out. Stay around a few minutes, guys. Fellowship, fellowship. We still got the building, so I encourage you, you know. <laughs> Fellowship, fellowship. It's awesome. Literally, this is the earliest I've ever seen us in. It is not even 845. So if I'm still here, you know, because I usually leave at 915. So if I'm, I'm still here, there you go. But fellowship, guys, thank you guys for coming, and we'll see you on Tuesday.